Hello everybody, welcome to this fourth lecture in the foundation series and today we will be talking about light and matter interaction. If you think about it, uh, the two most abundant substances available uh, in nature is uh, matter, first of all your atoms, your molecules and the other substance that is uh, widely available is electromagnetic radiation. So it is very important for us to understand how these two things light and matter they interact with each other so throughout the talk i might use term like electromagnetic radiation or light and you should be aware that they are the same thing so all the properties they transcend for both the cases and in school you might have been exposed to some of the models that we use to describe how light is propagating in space or how light is interacting with other materials one of them is the ray model which in which we draw straight lines uh, depicting light going from one location to the other and then you have the wave model in which we describe light as being a wave and has a certain wavelength and depending on the different wavelengths you can have different colors of light and uh, we also have the particle model in which uh, we say that light is made of of this individual particles which are called photons so depending on time to time we use these three models to best describe how light is propagating and how light is interacting with materials we will be focusing on the the wave model of how light is propagating and interacting with materials it is essentially the oscillation of these particles that is accompanying a transfer of energy and the electromagnetic waves they do not require a medium for traveling and all the electromagnetic waves are transfers in nature so you have your complete electromagnetic spectrum your light wave your microwaves infrared x-rays what have you so all these are basically electromagnetic waves and that basically lies in this non ionizing radiation part so the uh, other electromagnetic part of the spectrum uh, which consists of the UV rays, uh, these hard X-rays, your gamma rays, these are uh, rays with a lot of energy and whereas the UV visible and uh, your infrared, your microwaves, these are part of your non-ionizing radiation. Visible and infrared rays, they have uh, lower frequency and uh, your X-rays and gamma rays, they have higher frequency and uh, correspondingly if you have higher frequency it means you have higher energy in x-rays visible and radio wave region you have lower energy so when we talk about radiation uh, essentially it is a process by which the energy in the form of waves is either emitted or absorbed by a body and um, all radiation basically travels with the speed of light and that is what we have been talking about uh, these ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. So some of the light and matter interactions you might already be aware of. Uh, you have seen probably in your school which is uh, reflection, refraction. But there might be some new concepts scattering or absorption for example. So let's uh, go over them uh, step by step. Uh, in case of reflection we know that uh, you have a light coming in hitting a surface and it can get perfectly reflected back from the surface and in that case you have a specular reflection and when we uh, wake up in the morning and we are uh, combing our hair basically we are looking at a mirror and it is a very polished surface so you can see your reflection back however if the surface has uh, a lot of uh, defects and uh, uneven uh, material then uh, you will not be able to have a specular reflection you will get a diffuse reflection and in those cases you will not be able to see a perfect um, image in your reflection so it's a very common phenomenon of reflection observable in nature these mirror images of uh, your mountains and trees and animals and it's very famous in photography as well so the next kind of interaction is the refraction we know that light when it travels from one medium to the other depending on the refractive index of the medium it will bend and uh, the amount of bending of the light can be given by your Snell's law of refraction that is mentioned here. So uh, at this point uh, we should realize that uh, whenever light is uh, traveling from one medium to the other it is actually the wavelength that is changing 
because of its relation with the refractive index whereas the frequency of the light remains the same refraction a very common example is your human eye that does refraction and it uh, helps us actually uh, visualize objects uh, and um, it's a very important integral part of our anatomy so another type of interaction is uh, interference of light and uh, in interference you get constructive or destructive superposition of two or more waves that are meeting at a particular place and this is completely a wave like property because as you understand only a wave can occupy the same position in space whereas a particle cannot occupy the same position in space so you might have seen certain examples in which you see uh, color form on the soap bubbles or if you have the case of uh, oil floating on water then you can see these uh, colored fringes appear and these are all examples of interference of light waves that are uh, happening when they interact with this matter essentially whenever you are getting constructive interference you are matching your crest and your troughs of the two waves and so the resultant wave that you get has a much higher intensity than the individual waves however in destructive interference the waves are out of phase so you have a positive maximum of one wave corresponding to the negative maximum of the other and this results in your uh, resultant signal to be zero so this animation here you can see that there are two waves that are traveling one is this green wave and the other one is the red wave and uh, as these uh, green and red waves are overlapping you are seeing an increase in the signal or the resultant uh, intensity and as they are going out of phase then you can see that the resultant intensity is zero and this uh, results in a very common pattern which known as the standing wave pattern in physics so to understand the phase of the waves you can look at uh, this diagram that is given uh, and look at the sine wave and the cos wave and essentially you can see that the cos wave and sine wave are out of phase by each other by a value of 90 degrees or pi by 2 so essentially what we are saying is that uh, the oscillator in each of these waves is at a different position so for example you might have an oscillator in the lowermost position here this uh, second wave that you are seeing in the bottom it is shifted in phase by the other wave by a certain amount shown in this uh, shaded region and it has the same oscillator now in the lowermost position okay and uh, if you look at these examples of uh, the waves given in a and b the phase shift uh, for this case is 90 degree and essentially what we are saying is that a is ahead of b okay and uh, in the other case here you have b is leading a again by 90 degrees right and in the third case here you have a and b they are out of phase and they are out of phase by 180 degrees right and in the final case you have a and b both are in phase so the phase shift is zero so again for this cosine wave we can say that the cosine wave is ahead of the sine wave by 90 degrees another common uh, form of uh, interaction of light and matter is what we know as diffraction and by definition diffraction is the bending of waves whenever light uh, hits an obstacle at its corners so in our case here just to understand how diffraction is uh, different and uh, is a wave like characteristics suppose light was just a particle and you had a barrier that was obstructing this path in that case if light is just a particle then you should always see that some of these particles will go through in a straight line whereas the other particles will get blocked however in reality what we see is whenever you introduce a barrier these waves they propagate at an angle as shown here this characteristic that you see is specifically the behavior of a wave and that's why we say that light has a wave like characteristic as well some of you might have observed if you have a cd or a dvd and if you keep it at a certain angle you will observe that uh, it gives out colors and again this is an example of diffraction happening at the surface of this uh, 
CD because this CD or DVD has these grooves and they have these edges and the light gets refracted at the edges causing this colored pattern. So interestingly what happens is uh, if you have uh, two slits each of these slits acts as a source of light and what you see on the screen is you will see a fringe pattern appear on the screen with white and dark spots and this is a very very common example of diffraction. So the diffraction image looks something like this if you have uh, just a green colored light then you will see a maximum intensity spot appear in the center and uh, the intensity will gradually decrease uh, as you move away from the central spot and uh, in case of uh, white light which is a bunch of all the colors you will see the first order and higher order patterns appear in which uh, some of the light waves will cancel and some of them will add and it will give you these resultant colors that will appear. So diffraction is not only observed in uh, light waves, it is also observed in electrons. So if you send electrons through slits, what we observe is over a period of time a diffraction pattern and uh, some of you might be aware that electrons which are quantum mechanical can be uh, a wave or they can be a particle and this uh, phenomenon was uh, observed by Tonomura from Hitachi Industries uh, back in the 1960s. So it's a very famous experiment that shows that uh, electrons act as waves rather than particles. So another kind of interaction which is quite common between light and matter is scattering of light and scattering of light the redirection of light from the direction of its motion. So commonly you can encounter two types of scattering one is Raleigh scattering which is shown in the left here and the other one is Raman scattering. So in case of Raleigh scattering what is happening is the incident light when it interacts with a molecule it gets scattered so it changes direction however there is no change in the wavelength of the light so the incoming light and the scattered light they have the same wavelength however in case of raman scattering what happens is there is an interaction between the light and the molecules in a manner that there is an energy transfer that leads the molecule to become in an excited state and these vibrational modes of the molecule that are excited causes the light to lose some energy and the scattered light has a higher wavelength than the incident light. So here you can see the vibrational modes of a molecule. You can have symmetric stretching, you can have asymmetric stretching, you can have rocking motion, wagging motion and so all these types these are different modes of vibrations that are possible in a molecule and each of these modes ha would have a different energy. So another common type of interaction that happens between light and matter is absorption and it is one of the most essential interactions for life to survive actually and it is simply the transfer of energy of the electromagnetic wave to the atoms or molecules and uh, because of this selective absorption we see that lot of objects actually have color. So when you are talking about uh, your photosynthesis or in terms of photovoltaics where light is used to convert into electricity, all those processes are part of the absorption. So as we were discussing before, the light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum and it has transverse motion of the oscillators that are present in the uh, electromagnetic wave. And so these atoms or molecules, they are vibrating in this transverse motion as the light is propagating. If you look at the three dimensional case of how an electromagnetic wave looks like, you can see the animation here. So you have the light that is propagating along the x direction and as the light is propagating it has this electric field vector that is oscillating in the y direction. So this is our case of light being polarized and now this electric field vector is restricted to oscillate in a certain direction. So along with the electric field vector there is a magnetic field component of the light that's why it is called electromagnetic wave and this B vector 
is always perpendicular to the electric field vector and to the direction of the propagation of light. So I hope through this concise lecture you kind of have an idea of the rich nature of interaction between light and matter in its different forms. Thank you.